If you're struggling with client communication, boundaries, scope creep, and even getting buy-in, once it comes time to deliver the copy, your onboarding process might be the culprit. Hi, I'm Brittany McBean. I am a launch strategist and a copywriter, and I run a micro agency that serves premium clients, and we deliver a high-end white glove service, and that includes the onboarding process. If you have ever heard me talk about running a premium copywriting business, the thing that comes up over and over and over again are systems, 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 systems. Sometimes systems are automated, sometimes systems are manual, but systems are always documented and your onboarding process is a key system in your business. Systems and automation are a huge part of providing a consistent and premium experience for your clients. When you're running large scale projects or doing multiple projects at once, you need to be able to stay on top of your projects, manage them, hit your deadlines, and provide a consistent and predictable experience for your clients. So all of your systems need to be documented into an SOP or a standard operating procedure. This is simply a step-by-step -step written documented process of how you perform that system so that you could get in a car accident tomorrow or get sick or, I don't know, go on vacation and someone could step in and do your job seamlessly. So by the end of this video, you should be able to develop your onboarding system, write your own SOP, and deliver this system again and again and again, and hopefully step away from the system and have someone else or a tool do this for you. The onboarding system truly is the most important system that you'll have in your client project because it establishes the relationship that you have with your client. Most of us see onboarding as a way to get all the information we need to just start writing. That is something that happens when you onboard a client, but that is not the point of onboarding. Your onboarding system establishes you as the authority, puts you in the driver's seat of the project, it alleviates your client's anxiety, it establishes trust, it establishes a mutual connection and relationship, and it gives you everything that you need to successfully complete your project, and it gives your clients everything they need to have success with your project together. In your onboarding process, you are going to communicate all of the rules of the road of your project. We're gonna use this time to communicate the boundaries that you have established for running your business. Now, a lot of times when service providers talk about boundaries, we just use that as a way of talking about how terrible our clients are and how, how much they want to abuse our time and how we are just better than them and they are so lucky to have our time. That's not what boundaries are. But we also don't have a business without boundaries. Just because a client is paying thousands of dollars does not mean that they have access to you 24 seven. Boundaries are the guidelines that you have established that allow your client to have the most successful project possible. But what also happens in this onboarding process is you are showing your client that they have just made a really wise investment. You have the reins in your hand. You are driving this boat or this ship or whatever metaphor you want to use. They don't have to chase you down. They don't have to wonder what's coming up. They don't have to ask their admin and their ops team to manage this project. They get to sit back and relax and know that you are taking care of the project and you will give them everything they need. And that means that by the time you're turning in strategy or copy, they are already predisposed to trust the work that you're doing because they have not felt anxious. They have not felt like they've had to chase you down. They have not felt like they didn't know what was going on. They have trusted you every step of the way. So why would the creative process be any different? All right, I've talked enough. Let's dive right in. For your onboarding process, you are going to need tools. Tools equal tech, but don't freak out. This does not have to be expensive and this does not have to be difficult, you likely already are using one, if not more, of these tools already. You're going to need a internal project management system, an external client management system, and then a cloud-based data holding system. So that external client management system that you use or your CRM, client relationship management, whatever, we use HoneyBook. I've used HoneyBook for three years. I actually have a discount code for you. It is an affiliate link, but it gives you 55% off your first year. So you're gonna get it for less than $20 a month for your first year. After that, it's like $40 a month. Every single thing that we send our clients, all of our client communication, everything lives and dies in HoneyBook. They do not come inside any other tool of our business. They are never in my inbox. Everything, 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 everything lives and dies in HoneyBook. So that is what we use. There are plenty of tools out there. Use whatever tool works for you. Everything I'm teaching you today will apply to whatever CRM you wanna use. We use HoneyBook. 
you need an internal project management tool. For three years, we were on Trello, the free version. My entire team, my I screw my team to five people, all five of us. It got a little crazy at the end. We were on the free version of Trello for three years. We just switched to ClickUp, which is a paid tool. It's much better inside of ClickUp with a team, but we were on Trello, the free version, for three full years. You can use Trello as your internal project management system. It works just fine. And then for storing all of our copy and client information and data, we use Google Drive. So you're gonna need a client CRM, we've got HoneyBook. You're gonna need an internal project management tool, we've got Trello or ClickUp. And then you're gonna need a cloud-based information hub, Google Drive works just fine. Bottom line, you need tools. There are a lot of automation opportunities here, but start where you are, start simple. Figure out the process that works for you before you go and set up all the automation. Get it written down, get it documented first, and then set up the automation. Okay, our onboarding workflow actually starts in the inquiry process. My HoneyBook contact form is embedded on my website. So as soon as a client inquires or prospective client inquires, it automatically creates a project in HoneyBook. And then we have a fancy zap that automatically sets up something in ClickUp so that a client card is created. That's a little fancy schmancy. You don't have to start there, but everything is created in HoneyBook as soon as somebody inquires. So if they move on to a paid project, that project is already set up and we can take that inquiry into a proposal, into a contract, into everything we need for a client project right there inside HoneyBook and we don't have to do any fancy moving anything around. So as soon as they accept the proposal, we switch over to an automated workflow or onboarding workflow inside of HoneyBook and that kicks off a series of automated and manual tasks. I'm going to share all of those tasks. Remember, you can keep all of this manual. If you are a one person show, amazing. Do this by hand. If you have a team, assign these tasks to your team, figure out what you need to do, what you need them to do, and then set up the automation. This is now a completely hands-off process for me. I do not do a single thing in this process until the kickoff call at the very end. That is the final step of our onboarding workflow. That is the first time that I come in after the proposal. All right, the client accepts a proposal and then that automatically drafts an email that says, thank you for accepting the proposal. We go in and make sure that everything is how it should be in both the contract and the email. And then we send off the contract, the invoice and the email. The client signs the contract, they submit their invoice and then I go in and countersign. All right, this next part is a little fancy schmancy. You do not have to do the tech, but this is a really helpful step in your process. As soon as the client signs, we have a fajillion step zap that kicks off. You don't have to do the zap, but this is gonna be a super helpful process for you every single time a new client signs. So that zap sets up a giant Google folder with that client's name on it. Inside that Google folder is a bunch of subfolders. One of those subfolders is a client facing folder. This is a folder that the client will get added to. Inside of there is one subfolder where they're going to share all of the documents that they need to share with us, whether it's old copy, whether it's data, everything we're going to ask for, they're going to put into that folder. Another folder is a resource folder, a bunch of resources that we have created to help their project go a little bit smoother. It just gets copied every single time we have a new client and copied into that folder. And then the other folders are all internal folders and that's where we're going to hold our research, our drafts, some internal notes that we're making, parts of our creative process. All of that just gets created by that zap or you can do it by hand. Either way, that is totally set up so that it is created there for our clients and we're not sitting there creating them every single time we're creating a new draft or starting research. It's just there when we go to do that part of our process. And then we are also manually going over to our company calendar and blocking off the general dates of that project. That happens immediately, ASAP, like the day that the client signs. We do not just sit back and remember that that's gonna be on our calendar. No, that client space gets booked in immediately. Even if we don't have the exact dates for everything, that space is blocked off. That client has paid for that space that is blocked out on the calendar. This way we're not overbooking ourselves. We're not booking extra things in the middle of it. We know that that client space is taken up and now we only have X number of spots left in our calendar for other clients. Okay. That is the logistics of setting up a new client inside our system. But we have not really onboarded that client. We start gathering everything we need from our clients at a minimum three weeks before their project starts. We're usually booking new clients three to six, sometimes at busy seasons, up to eight weeks before a project starts. At a minimum, we are starting the client onboarding collection process three weeks before their start date. 
So we're gonna set up the welcome email. We're gonna pull up the welcome email template. We're going to manually edit it to make sure it is perfectly custom for that client. And we're going to send them the welcome email that says, oh my gosh, can't wait to get everything started. Here's everything you need to know so that we can onboard you before your project starts. Because day one is not onboarding. Day one is we hit the ground running. We are starting your project. Let's go, it's game time. Their welcome email is gonna have their welcome kit, which lays out guidelines, expectations, like work hours, how they communicate me. Do not call me on my phone. You don't have the number. Do not voxer me. Absolutely not. Do not hit me up in the DMs. Do not pass go. Do not come in my inbox. Honeybook, 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 because your project is so important. Your communication is so important. And if you hit me at any other one of these places, I'm going to miss your communication. And I don't want to miss a thing because I am so invested in your project and you have invested heavily in us. So please communicate in the place where me and the team working on your project will see every last bit of communication. And also weekends and holidays are not business days. Those times do not count. They don't exist. Hopefully they don't exist for you either. Those are the kind of things that go in the welcome kit. They're gonna get the link to their Google folder, the one that was created previously. They're gonna get their questionnaire where we ask them all the juicy questions we need to start developing a sense of their brand voice, their objectives for the project, their ideal client, all of those things that we need to know that they can start to put on paper so that we can start to set up for those first really important brand strategy calls. They're gonna get a detailed project plan. So not that general, this is the time we have blocked off for your project, but a detailed, these are our meetings, these are the days your first drafts are due, this is how many days you have to turn around feedback, this is when your final draft is due. Everything so that they can approve the entire 15 weeks of our project and get it on their calendar because they are busy too from before the first day of our project. They get the project plan in that welcome email. And then, because that is a lot of information, they're going to get a Loom welcome video where I give them step-by-step -step instructions and help them drink from that fire hose a little bit easier. We might send a follow-up email if they need a little help remembering every, getting everything in, but then we're also gonna send a second email where we then ask for like login information for their programs. We might ask for some names of people to start reaching out to, to contact, to interview for market research interviews, all of the stuff that we still need but didn't wanna overwhelm them with on the very first email. The last email before our first meeting, we're just gonna confirm the project plan, make sure that they have all the links, all the meeting dates, everything that they need, make sure that everything looks good before we start day one of the project. Internally, we are now going into our calendar and adding in those detailed dates of the project plan. So we are not only adding in everything on the client's project plan, like when the first drafts are due, when the final drafts are due, when our meetings are, all of those due dates, deadlines, and important dates in the project plan, but we also have a bunch of internal dates that we have to add because the first draft being due is not the first deadline. We have our first draft due like a week before that. And that goes through a couple rounds of edits. And then we have the second draft due that goes through a couple rounds of edits. And then we have the final first draft that goes out to the client. And then we have the revisions of the client's revisions. So we have quite a few internal deadlines that we need to add to the calendar and making sure that we have blocked off five hours to copy edit a sales page over three days. That doesn't just happen when it happens, that gets blocked out on the calendar eight weeks before it happens. We're making sure that all of the Google Calendar invites are set out, that all of the Zoom links are in there and that that URL is clickable because, oh my God, it drives me nuts when you cannot just go into your Google Calendar invite and click on it that you have to copy and paste it into, no, no, just no. We don't do client gifts anymore, but instead we make a donation at our client's choosing on their behalf. So we go ahead and we make the donation to the charity of their choosing. We will send one final email just confirming everything. And then we will go into that Google Drive and organize every last thing that they send in, that project prep homework. That's what we call all the onboarding stuff. Make sure that everything is organized for our project to start. And then the final and last step is the kickoff call. Now a note about the kickoff call. I do not do any creative strategy on the kickoff call. We have brand strategy meetings that start as a part of the project in week one. Week zero is the kickoff call. And this is where I go over all of the guidelines, the project plans, all of that overwhelming information that we threw at our client. I wanna make sure that everything feels really good. I wanna make sure that project plan feels really good, that everything is clearly laid out, that everything that we just threw at them in written form is explained thoroughly. Make sure that all of their questions are answered, that all of those um, turnaround times for revisions actually work with their internal team. Make sure that they understand our meetings 
meeting policy, make sure that they understand our communication policy, give them an opportunity to voice some concerns. Some of our policies are rather rigid, but they are all created with our client benefit in mind because we've tried a bunch of different things and they all didn't work for some way, shape or form. So I wanna give them an opportunity to ask me questions and make sure that if we need to adjust anything for that specific client, that we have the flexibility to do so. So that's what we go over on the kickoff call. And then the week after that, we start with a creative strategy and research and all of that good stuff that you do in a copy project. So the final tips with any system in your business, but specifically your onboarding system, templatize anywhere you can. Even if you're doing everything manually, create templates so that you pull up that template and then customize for that client. Automate anywhere you can. Figure out the system that you're gonna use first. Don't wait until it's perfect. You can always go back every quarter and optimize it, but figure out the system and then automate it to get some freaking time back. Don't spend hours and hours and hours researching tools, trying different tools, testing different tools. You will waste years of your life trying to find the perfect tool. There is no such thing. Every tool has benefits, every tool has major downfalls or cons. The best tool is whichever one you will use. Pick one and stick with it because you will waste more time trying to find the perfect tool than just using one tool. You will make more money just picking a tool and using it. I don't care if it's free, I don't care if it's paid, just pick one and use it. And last but not least, trust that there are skilled individuals that you can pay well that can do this for you, that you do not have to have your hand in every single piece of the pot for your client to have an excellent experience. But if you are the one doing this, that is perfectly okay. You will save yourself time, you will save yourself money, you will save yourself stress and anxiety when you systemize, templatize, automate, and document, document, document. All right, there is more about onboarding than you've ever wanted to know in your entire life. Hopefully that was helpful. If you want me to keep taking more deep dives into specific systems into your business, please comment down below. Let me know what you are struggling with. Let me know if you need more ways to prevent scope creep and enhance client communication and set more boundaries with your clients because at the end of the day, your clients want to have a great working experience with you and they will do exactly what you let them and work with you in the exact way that you tell them to work with you. It's just your job to set up a successful project. All right, I'll see you in the next video.